Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy B. Back with another video. Talking about that Batman vs. Superman movie today. Uh, I got a chance to go check it out, you know, last night. <clears throat> the theater was pretty packed, as you know, of course, I expected it to be. I went to that uh, AMC inside Deerbrook Mall. For anybody living inside the Houston area, y'all know, uh, know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, that's irrelevant. All right, as far as the movie, uh, it was so-so. I didn't really like it all that. Well, I, I can't say I didn't like it, but it wasn't what I expected it to be. You know, for all the hype and all the trailers and everything, it just it really just didn't live up to me. I'm going to tell you why. All right, first of all, a little rundown on the on the plot. Uh, what caused Batman and Superman to fight. The movie starts off, picks up where Man of Steel left off, you know, where Superman was fighting General Zod and they were destroying the city. Well, it cuts to um, a different Bruce Wayne's perspective because he happened to be, in t uh, it's revealed that he was in town during all that. And it shows uh, Bruce Wayne, uh, who's Ben Affleck, of course, He's driving frantically through the city streets and, you know, trying to save random people and, you know, trying to get some of his employees out of his building that he works in. And and some people die, you know, that, that he works for, that works for him in his building. And so after, so after this, this raises questions with Congress and the Senate and, you know, all that stuff or whether Superman is really good for humanity and is he really going to be dangerous at some point in the future but Batman in particular he's figuring that yeah this guy will be dangerous at some point in the future so I need to figure out a way to stop him now and in the meantime you have uh, Lex Luthor you know manipulating things behind the scenes to to either make Superman and Batman fight or you know that kind of shit He's trying to get a hold of Kryptonite and, you know, stuff like that, too. And he got his own evil purposes going on. <laughs> and man, so he manipulates a situation where he kidnaps uh, Superman's mama <clears throat> and makes him go. And, and he says, well, you go and kill Batman and I'll let your mama go. And so... Superman, Batman, they go and fight and, you know, all this other stuff. And, okay, don't give away too much of the movie. But anyways, as far as the movie, um, I'll talk about the good things and then I'll talk about the bad things in it. First off, the, the, the good things that I did like about the movie. I liked Batman, Ben Affleck, Bruce Wayne, and Batman. This Batman was... Probably one of the most badass Batmans I've ever seen on screen. They really captured the the essence and the feel of what Batman should be. You know, I really enjoyed that that part of the movie. Um, <clears throat> you know how Batman has this this rule about not killing and you know stuff like that. And, and it, most iterations that I've seen, not this one at all. They threw all that shit out the window. Batman kills motherfuckers in this one. Like, he, he's running motherfuckers over with his car. He's blowing people up. He's snapping people's necks. I mean, he's brutal in this movie. It even showed a part in the dream sequence where he's shooting motherfuckers with guns. I mean, he's he, this Batman did not care about all that not killing stuff, which I kind of liked because I think Batman should kill people every once in a while. And he, this Batman, he even kills people indirectly because it's because he, this Batman had a habit of, you know, every time he took down a criminal, he would put a uh, a Batman brand on him, and and it's explained in in the universe in the movie, whoever got sent to jail and they happen to have a Batman brand on, they was like a marked man in prison, like they would go on to prison and end up getting killed. So of course Batman knew this. So he's still branding people, knowing that he was sending them to prison to their death. So this Batman had no qualms about killing people. I liked Batman's fight scenes. It looked more like uh, 
I, I really enjoyed his fight scenes better than the Dark Knight trilogy's fight scenes because the Dark Knight trilogy's fight scenes uh, for Batman, yeah, he could fight, but it didn't really look like you you were watching a, a, a trained uh, martial artist and then who could do all this stuff and who's at peak physical condition. You know, when you watch this Batman, the way he would um, shoot out of places real fast and he was all slick and and ninjutsu like this is what batman really was supposed to be so i think they captured that pretty well and i know a lot of people were uh down on ben affleck's performance uh, like when he got cast as batman they were kind of down on it but he did a good job to me so i like that that part of the movie <clears throat> another thing i liked was when the action finally did start i liked uh, a lot of the action between, you know, Batman and Superman. I liked the fight, the actual fight itself. It didn't last too long, but it was a good fight, <clears throat> you know, and Batman did come out on top, <laughs> which I which I kind of thought that he would because it, it kind of shows that <clears throat> once Superman is weakened down to, you know, a level that he's on equal terms with somebody else, it really shows how Batman is a much better combat specialist. And Superman really can't fight other than his powers. And it really shows once you stripped away his powers and his, you know, super strength abilities. But then, of course, <clears throat> he doesn't kill Superman when he has a chance and, and Lex Luthor came down and manipulated, sent the monster they called Doomsday to fight, you know, all of them, basically. And the city wasn't destroyed this time. I guess the other, in the last movie, they figured that the destruction of the city, people had a problem with that. So they kind of, they fought within the city, but they didn't destroy the whole entire city this time, which was, you know, cool. And another part of the movie that I really enjoyed was Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg's performance. He was the bright spot of the movie. Like, every time he was on screen, he <clears throat> he just stole the show. He stole every scene that he was in. He was great. I really enjoyed his performance. He was a, he was a different Lex Luthor than what we used to. He was kind of quirky, kind of crazy. But I enjoyed him. You know, I enjoyed it. He was the best. He gave the best performance of the movie. And... I think that that he he really did a good job as Lex Luthor. I like that, you know, a lot. I just want I'm I just can't wait to see what they do with Joker now in the Suicide Squad because <laughs> because Jared Leto will have to top that performance, you know. And other than that, I can't really think of too many other things that was good about the movie, you know, that I really enjoyed about it. About it. it had some good dialogue, you know. Some of the lines were kind of funny. <laughs> I like the part where Lawrence Fishburne was like, uh, crime wave in Gotham City. In other news, water is wet. <laughs> it was just funny the way he, the way he said that. It was, it, was, uh, it kind of had me, gave me a little chuckle. But with the stuff I didn't like about the movie, I didn't like how long it was with just these long, drawn-out scenes of, of just nothing going on, you know? The movie was kind of long for, for it to be no action, you know? The, a lot of the action didn't really happen until, like, the last 30 minutes of the movie. So, basically, you had two two hours of just, you know... Long drawn out plot development. It, oh, okay, yeah, I, I understand that you need story and you need you know all that stuff. But <clears throat> if you're gonna do that, make it you know funny at least. You know it. The movie took itself way too seriously. It it, it took itself way too seriously. Like there wasn't really a whole lot of you know comic relief and you know stuff like that. Like if you take a long Marvel movie like. Like uh, the Avengers or something like that. 
it's a or Iron Man. It's it's a those are long movies too, but they they balance it out because they're so entertaining. Like they put a lot of comedy in them. They you know and and a lot of great performances, and they don't take themselves too seriously. This movie took itself way too seriously, and and it was trying to kind of trying to teach a lesson of morality and you know all this stuff. And while you're watching it, it didn't really put. Batman or Superman in a positive light. Like, you really didn't know who you were supposed to be rooting for. And which is, I guess, I guess is, it's on purpose because Batman at one point, he admitted like, yeah, well, yeah, me, me and you are criminals ourselves, Alfred. That's, that's what we, we've always been. And with Superman, it was a kind of a question for him. Like, even though it showed him doing all these good deeds and stuff, there was kind of a cloud hanging over him. Like, is Superman really good for humanity and, you know, things like that? Which was, uh, I don't know. But when I'm watching a movie like that, I don't want to see all these moralistic lessons. Don't just take, don't take yourself so seriously. You don't just, just show me a good movie, you know, that I could eat some popcorn, you know, and, and, and see some action packed suit, uh, Batman versus Superman type stuff. Just don't, it didn't have to take itself so seriously. But that's the thing with Zack Snyder. I don't really think he's good with, with comedy, you know, stuff. A lot of his movies are, you know, very serious in tone and, you know, things like that. <clears throat> and I didn't like, uh, Wonder Woman. That it it seemed kind of corny to me, like the way that they that they was kind of it seemed like it it seemed too forced to me, like especially with the promotion at the beginning, like they was putting super uh super woman like not uh, not superwoman but uh, Wonder Woman in the forefront of a lot of the promotional art and stuff like that with Superman and Batman in the background. It was kind of like they were just trying to uh get some feminist. Tickets and you know female empowerment tickets, people to come see the movie and stuff by putting her in the forefront. But she added nothing to the movie. Her character was kind of silly, and at certain at some points, it it was like they were trying to make it like she was more powerful than Superman. You know, like Superman and, and Batman are getting their ass kicked by the monster and stuff. But Wonder Woman coming in and, and she hardly getting beat up, and she pretty much was. You know, had him under control. It, it, it was it was kind of silly. Now I don't know much about Wonder Woman in the comics, but and she, I, I guess she's supposed to be pretty strong. But I just didn't like the way that they did it. I, I thought her character was unnecessary, and and she didn't have to be so in the forefront like that. Because I don't I don't really know how many people really like Wonder Woman like that. I don't even know if she was that popular of a character, but to where you could put her in the forefront of a Batman and a Superman movie and people will just be like, yeah, you know. But overall, I it was an uh, for, forgettable movie, you know. I'd give it a, a six. It had nothing on uh, a, a Marvel movie, you know, um, like a Iron Man movie is a, a blow, blow that out the water any day. This is why Marvel is beating DC in the movies right now because... Marvel just have it, has it on lock, and they and they and DC is just trying to, you know, catch up with Marvel because and now they got a like it hinted at a, a Justice League movie that they that they're gonna have uh, coming up, you know, like with Aquaman and Cyborg and and the Flash and you know all those all that stuff. So we'll see how that that comes out. Now I am looking forward to Suicide Squad. I kind of think that. Suicide Squad is going to be much better than Batman vs. Superman. And I'm ready. I can't wait to see that. But at the end of the day, Marvel is kicking DC's ass in the theaters because they they understand entertainment a, a little better. Like, DC tries to, especially with their movies, they try to take themselves too seriously. And it makes for a boring movie like this. This Batman vs. Superman could have been a lot better, you know, if it had some comic relief, if it had more, if it had, you know, more entertaining, more fun dialogue in it and, you know, things like that. But if you're just watching a movie um, 
for two and a half hours just kind of preaching to you and, and trying to throw all these serious lessons in there. We know we all know that this another thing, uh I didn't like how they how they have to keep showing Batman's origin story. Okay, we get it. Everybody knows how Batman came into being. If you don't know how Batman came into being at this point, filmmakers you just assume that that everybody knows what Batman's uh, origin story is. Don't don't waste our time with it. I mean, if if you wanted a two or three people in the audience that's watching a Batman movie and you don't know the history of how Batman is, well, fuck you. Just go look it up on your own, then you know. But don't waste all the rest of us, our people's time with origin stories all the time. Like that's why I, I like how in the new with the new Superman, the new Spider Man movie that's coming out, they throwing all that damn uh, origin story to the forefront. Like nobody gives a shit about that anymore. Like how many times we need to see Spider Man and all these guys' origin stories? It's pointless. It, we we don't need to see it anymore in the days of internet and. All that stuff. Let's go look it up on Wikipedia or something. You know, if you really want to know that bad. But, uh, yeah, but once again, Marvel slate of movies that's coming out is going to be much better. Uh, Captain America, Winter, um, Civil War is going to blow this out the water. Um, Suicide Squad is probably going to be much better than this because it's not directed by Zack Snyder. Um, but yeah, but that's that's it. That's my take on the movie. I mean, it's probably. I mean, I would suggest you go see it while it's in the theater. Still, you know, it's not a complete waste of time. It is worth going to see, but it's it didn't live up to the hype to me. It just didn't. But uh, okay, that's that's my rant over. Thanks for listening. Peace. <laughs>